Hey, I'm Pastor Chris Thompson, and this is the Final 7 Podcast. So buckle up, it's almost time for liftoff. 7, 6, 5, 4, All systems are at go. 3, 2, 1. Liftoff. And welcome to the Final 7 Podcast. I'm Pastor Chris Thompson. Thank you for jumping on and listening to this episode today. And I do have some really awesome stuff to share with you today. And uh, before I do that, I want to say and mention again, this podcast is available anywhere that you can get podcasts. And I would love for you to go subscribe, download, share the final seven podcasts with a friend, with a buddy, with someone you think would enjoy the content and benefit greatly. And I would greatly appreciate it as well. Leave a review uh, on Apple podcasts, Spotify. We also upload all of the podcast episodes to the YouTube channel of the church that I am privileged to pastor Keystone apostolic church based in Huntington Valley, Pennsylvania. At least the facility is located there, but we are a church that is on site to impact all of the region of Philadelphia. And I'm glad about that. Thank God for his many blessings. Now, listen, got something to share with you today that's a very uh, thought provoking, soul stirring, hopefully. And if you're listening, prayerfully, you will get what I'm uh, trying to convey here. Everything, listen to me carefully, everything is spiritual. Everything is spiritual. Yeah, yeah, I know we always talk about, or many people always talk about the fact that, hey, man, chill, bro. Everything's not spiritual, okay? You can relax. You don't have to be hyper-spiritual. And listen, not advocating for this hyper sense of spirituality to the point where you're so heavenly minded that you're no earthly good, you know, yada, 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 whatever that means. I've never actually figured out what that actually means. Uh, but I guess it. We're, what we're trying to say is that as human beings being in the world, as born again believers being in the world, but not supposed to be of the world, uh, we need to have some level of balance because while we are serving the Lord and while we are called to be ambassadors for the kingdom of God, we are also dealing with humanity all around us. That humanity includes yourself, you and I, the flesh that we walk around in. And uh, this idea of everything's not spiritual um, can be misleading. Now, I guess what I, I, I get what is being said again, balance, right? We don't want to think everything that happens to us uh, is because some de- demonic spirit or even some Holy Spirit um, some heavenly spirit, uh, made us do it, uh, or, uh, put us in a position to where we could stub our toe or get a, a flat tire, uh, or spill a drink on ourselves or something. And so that the heavens can open up and the spirit of the Lord can descend upon your head like a dove. And the voice of the Lord can speak to you and give you a great revelation because you spill drink on yourself. No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, Well, let's let the Bible talk. James chapter two, verse 26 says this for as the body without the spirit is dead. So faith without works is dead. And I want to focus on the first half of that. We always tend to focus, of course, on the faith without works is dead point, because James is trying to make a point that having faith and no action is useless. But I want to look at the metaphor he used to explain that point, which was The body, the human body, the physical body without the spirit is dead. What is he saying? Well, of course, 
He's using that to explain faith without works is dead. So that means your body has no function at all unless there is this invisible force called your spirit, right? Uh, or your soul. In this case, those are those two terms are used interchangeably, which refers to your seat of emotion and action reaction. This is the this is what gives your physical human body its animation. Uh, God, when he created Adam, created <clears throat> that body first and then breathed into him the breath of life. Then he became, the Bible says, a living soul. So your body, my body, your body is useless without the spirit within it. Right. That's why I always say I always use this uh, sort of language that uh, y y you, your spirit or your soul is the real you. The, the, the flesh and blood is not the real you. In fact, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the Bible teaches us that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. This flesh and blood that we currently have, this fallen body, this depraved uh, human body that we currently have, uh, it was sown in corruption, right? It is corrupted. And so those who are born again into the kingdom of God, you're you're born into the new, into a new life. You get the, the Holy Spirit of God as a down payment for the coming full blown redemption when Jesus returns and we shall be changed and made like unto his glorious body. In other words, we're going to get a new body, ladies and gentlemen, a glorified body. Amen. And so because of that. This human body is, 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 is temporary. And with this temporary human body comes all of these flaws and failures, but it's not the real us. The real us is our soul, which does not change. Okay. Our soul is going to live on forever. We can change bodies every hundred years or something. In fact, here's an interesting fact. Scientifically, uh, throughout a person's life's uh, lifespan, an average of 70 to 80 years, you will have shed your skin over a thousand times. Yes, that's true. Look it up. Absolute scientific fact. You will have shed your skin over a thousand times. So the skin cells that you see uh, currently, you didn't that if you're 30 years old, 40 years old, whatever, at that point, you will have you will have the, the, the skin you're looking at now. What I'm saying is the skin that you're looking at now, uh, the flesh on the outer anyway, the what they call the epidermis or the skin, the outer shell. Uh, you have already shed that since birth, probably somewhere between three and five hundred times if you're in your 30s or 40s. OK, and I'm using 30s or 40s because that's about where I'm at in my age. Okay. So, uh, even in the literal sense, your body's constantly changing, constantly repairing and changing, shedding and getting new skin and, th and cells reforming, regenerating, uh, getting new cells, right? Things are always changing physically with your body. So the body is useless without your spirit, your soul, because that is the real you. Okay. I say all that to say, again, everything is spiritual. What am I trying to say? What do I mean? So earlier, uh, before I began recording this podcast today, I, uh, I was getting groceries and I pulled up to my home and opened the door, getting ready to get my groceries out the trunk and head inside and kiss my wife and see my son and all that. And as soon as I step out, I step, I'm wearing flip flops and I step on gum that was on the pavement I step on gum. Nobody likes to step on gum. Okay, let's just be honest. That's there's a lot of things that nobody that we could all go the rest of our life without having to uh, deal with. One of those things is stepping on gum or spilling a drink on yourself, right? <laughs> or stubbing your toe. We could go without ever doing those things again, but they happen. And what I am not saying is that the happening is somehow Spiritual. I'm not going to hyper spiritualize that. Oh, Lord, what are you trying to tell me through me stepping on this gum? There must be some great revelation or con confirmation of something that I was praying the other day. No, I'm not saying that. What I am saying is the reaction is spiritual. How 
we address those issues or the frame, the lens through which we see various things happening in our world and in our personal life is spiritual. It is a test. It is a, it is a uh, barometer that can reveal to us that the Lord, believe it or not, can use to reveal to us where we are spiritually revealing to us how much is, are you governed by your flesh or by the spirit? Where are you on that scale today or in general? Uh, go with me in your mind and pretend that there is a, uh, a scale or a scale of one to 10 or something like that. And on the 10 end, that means you are, man, you are spiritual. You, you you're, sp or rather I should say the Holy spirit is fully governing your life. You are fully submitted to the spirit and the frame and the lens that the spirit sees through and all of that good stuff. You're fully. And then of course, on the other end, all the way on the one end, you are fully governed by your flesh. You are animalistic. You are reactionary. You are impulsive and you do things solely based on pleasure or the moment. And you react to things in a very uncontrollable manner. Okay. Look at that scale. Let, let it, let an image of that scale come into your mind. The question that God is, or rather, I should say it this way, what God wants us to see on a regular basis is where we are on that scale. Of course, he wants us as close to the 10 side as possible. By the way, disclaimer, no one is a 10, and I reckon no one will ever be a 10 or has ever been a 10. In fact, that is why we have to be changed. We're going to be changed into his glorious body when he comes. Amen. Because listen, corruption cannot, corruption has to put on incorruption because corruption cannot inherit the kingdom of God and flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. We're going to have to be changed. But there is a process happening while we're here in this life, living this life and the whole thing the whole, this whole life that you live in this life is one big test. It's one big preparation. It's, it's God's way and opportunity to prepare you to be with him and avoid eternal destruction. And we get to choose that. We get to choose those paths. And so then we have to let ourselves be submitted to and governed, governed by the Holy Spirit. Um, God will use like, everything is not spiritual in the sense that the happenings of your life aren't all spiritual phenomenons. Okay. It's just life. However, how we react to those things, whether simple or complicated, whether small or big, how we react to them, the lens and the frame through which we view them and therefore would determine how we address them. That is a spiritual thing because especially let me put this uh, important point on there, especially if you are a born again child of God, if you have been grafted into the kingdom of God, adopted into his family through the new birth plan, which, by the way, is found in summary, in Acts chapter 2, verse 38, okay? If you have been born into the kingdom and you ha have officially become a child of God through the new birth process, especially in your life and my life, everything can reveal where we are spiritually. Everything can reveal where we are spiritually, spiritually. Yes. Even stubbing your toe on the side of the bed frame can reveal where, what is governing our, our existence. 
are you are we sowing to the spirit or are we sowing to the flesh? Because the scriptures teach that if we sow to the spirit, we will of the spirit reap life. And yada, 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 everything else. But if we sow to the flesh, we will of the flesh reap corruption. So what have you, you and I been sowing to? See, it's not so much about when we come to the Lord and we finally come to the point where, listen, I need Jesus and I'm not smarter than him. And living my own way and doing my own thing is actually not the most beneficial choice that, that I can make in this life. I realize surrendering to the will of God for my life and for life in general is the best and most beneficial and most beautiful option I can choose. Once you have realized that and you come to the Lord and you start going to a church and you repent of your sins and re repent of your iniquities and you give your life to Jesus and you're baptized into the name of Jesus and you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost and now you're choosing this life of consecration or holiness or dedication unto God. That, ladies and gentlemen, does not eliminate the troubles of life, the pains, the pressures, and the problems. It does not eliminate it. Now, I know many of you listening pr certainly have heard that said before. You understand that that is true and that is the case. But how do we react when the rubber meets the road from, from day to day? How do we react to various things going on in our lives, ongoing circumstances, or just momentary uh, inconveniences? How do we react? Through what lens or frame are we living life? Through what lens or frame are we living life and viewing things determines how we're going to react when unexpected things happen or, or when there's ongoing struggle. Uh, oftentimes I believe people come to the Lord under the guy or under the, uh, uh, under the assumption, the subtle subconscious assumption that man, once I start living for the Lord and striving to do his will, my life's going to turn out to be just all rosy. No, what the Lord is offering you. Through, through surrendering your life to him, what he's offering you, you and I ultimately is eternal life with him. Why? This is not paradise. Just because you've been born again doesn't suddenly usher you into paradise. It gives you access to the kingdom. And that starts here and now. Yes, the kingdom is not observable now, but it is within us, as Jesus said. And what is within us should, should influence how we react and react concerning the things that happen without us or outside of us or around us. Amen. So this is what I mean when every, when I say everything is indeed spiritual. And sometimes we circle the same wilderness for years and years and years because we have not grabbed a hold of this concept yet. Oh, yeah, the children of Israel, they got led out of Egypt. They went through their salvation experience. By the way, the exodus from Egypt uh, is a, all a type and a shadow of the new birth plan. Okay. They had to pass through the waters of the Red Sea. There was no other way to get to the promised land except they pass through the waters. What is that? That's baptism for us in, in the New Testament, for the New Testament church. You must go through the water to find life eternal. I just wanted to throw that in there for anybody listening who has not been baptized into the name of Jesus Christ as yet, or perhaps you have been falsely told that baptism isn't essential 
in terms of salvation or your status as a son of God. That teaching is false. Throughout scripture, it teaches us about the importance of baptism and what it means for you and I. But anyway, that's not what we're talking about today. The children of Israel passed through the Red Sea, had their salvation experience from Egypt, which is a type of the world and sin and all of that. And then they get to a wilderness and everything doesn't go as smooth as perhaps they thought it might go or should go because, hey, you know, God led us out of Egypt through Moses and man, we had our salvation experience. We had our jailbreak experience and now we're going on to bigger and better things and everything's going to be hunky dory, peachy keen, no problems, no pain, no pressure. And they find out pretty quickly <laughs> that that was a false assumption. And things aren't going exactly as planned and flesh is still flesh and you've got to deal with humanity and you've got to deal with the, the issues of a fallen world. And when those things begin to happen, the children of Israel many times began to complain against God. And because of that, because they're not viewing things through the right lens, because they have not learned the lesson of what God's trying to teach them and do with them. They had to circle the wilderness for 40 years till all of the complainers died off. Okay. I say all that to say, understand how spiritual complaining is. Complaining and complaining and complaining about everything that is going on in your life, whether it's random things that happen from day to day or just ongoing struggles and issues and stuff, understand that viewing that through the lens of negativity or from the lens of your flesh and constantly griping and complaining and finding fault to where you're constantly up and down and you can't commit yourself to the things of God or commit yourselves to being part of the church of the living God and being present and available and committed to the house of the Lord and to the work of God. It's that, it's that murmuring and complaining spirit that kills so many things for us. God is on the verge and working in the background on things in your life and my life. And we abort those things and kill the progress of those things because of our tongues because of the mindset we choose to have scripture teaches in James or rather Philippians chapter four, verse eight, it literally, literally tells us what things to keep our minds focused on, how we should frame our world and everything that happens around us so that we can prosper. Whatsoever, the things that are true, the things that are lovely, the things that are just, the things that are righteous, the things that are good and pure and lovely. If there be any praise and any virtue, think on these things. But because we view things from an improper flesh driven lens, it produces a complaining and murmuring spirit, which which kills, which adds interest to your problems and makes it feel worse. This is something we have to overcome. So yes, from that vantage point, ladies and gentlemen, everything is spiritual. Everything is spiritual. Again, nobody likes stepping on gum and stubbing their toe from those small things to other big things. We, we need to ask the Lord, and pray much and seek God much so that we are on the positive side of that spiritual scale from one to 10, that we remain on that, on the positive side more, far more often than not so that we can react to things from a, from a godly, from a, from a godly place. And we'll be blessed. We'll be blessed for it. 
Uh, I want to read something else before we wrap up. Romans chapter 1, verse 20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. What I'm, what I'm attempting to extract from this here is that it is the, is that, it is that, it's easy for me to say. It is that the invisible gives way to the visible. It is the invisible that gives way to the visible. So there are spirits and things working in the background that we cannot see. And a lot of even the major conflicts on the, on a world stage is because of spiritual activity that has taken place prior to the physical manifestation of the issues we see in the world. Okay. Because again, what, if you sow to the flesh, you will of the flesh reap corruption. And if you sow to the spirit, ladies and gentlemen, you will reap life and blessing and favor. Well, I'm going to wrap up today. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this podcast. I hope this, I hope this blessed you in some way. Um, and you can take some nuggets and stuff from this. I felt so inspired this morning to talk about this and, uh, you, any, uh, you know, I could, I could continue and talk and go into different details about different things, but I just wanted to skim the surface and plant the seed and give the thought here today and encourage somebody. The Lord is with you. Life isn't going to be perfect when you live for the Lord, but he does change the frame and the lens through which you view things. And that ladies and gentlemen is the greatest blessing of all. We have acquired a pearl of great price and I am willing to sell all that I once had to obtain it in Jesus Christ. In fact, that's the challenge that Jesus gave the rich young ruler in Matthew chapter 19. Sell all you have and follow me. Is the kingdom of God worth that much to you? Well, stay safe. Have a happy 4th of July weekend. There is freedom in Jesus. That's the real freedom. And until next time. Keep chewing on truth. This is timeless truths for the times. And watch and pray. The end time is now. The Final Seven Podcast is brought to you by Keystone Apostolic Church, based in Huntington Valley, Pennsylvania, a suburb of Philadelphia. We exist to connect lives to the life giver. Are you in the area? Come stop in and let's draw near to God together. Visit KeystoneUPC.com. That's KeystoneUPC.com for more info. Thank you for lending us your ears for this episode. We hope you'll keep tuning in to more as we approach and move through the final seven years. Hey, never stop watching and never stop praying. God bless you.